This is Andy too. In this video, I'm going to uh, be working on the light, the wires, and the terminals of a Singer Model 403A. Now, these are very similar to um, 301, 301A, 401, 401A, uh, 404, the 500 Rocketeer, and the 503, 503A Rocketeers. And uh, I'm going to start um, by turning off some of the lighting here and just showing I have the standard incandescent bulb in the light fixture on this machine. And we're going to take a look at the brightness level of it. Yeah, it's daylight outside, so that's why there's... Uh, Kind of some light behind there. I'm not sure how well. Let me get this up here a little bit and kind of show it on the bed where you'd be working. Oh, that shows pretty good. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be showing you up here. There's a, there's a, what Singer called this focusing lens, a, a thick glass plate here with a little bubble that is supposed to focus the light. Uh, on the work area and I don't know if you can you can see these kind of bright and darker lines in the in the pattern over here so I've always wondered how well that focusing lens really works it would seem like you would want more light in this area you know but uh, it is what it is and there's uh, hundreds of thousands of machines out there with a standard incandescent light bulb in it. I'll turn that off. Okay, let me get some light back on here and we'll get started. The first thing I want to remove in this uh, video is called the lamp shade. And that is this cover right here. On this a particular model there's a screw in the center of the lampshade now there are other models that have uh, a dual screws more to the side and there's some that have a very more rectangular defined shape and you see this one has that little bit of a slant and it's got a little fin kinda coming out going back here to like a little tail, more like the Rocketeer. But remember, this is a special. Okay, so we're going to take this one screw out up here. And uh, now the lampshade is solid cast aluminum, and it has this thick glass lens mounted on the left hand side. So you don't want to be taking the screw out and surprise yourself and let this fall on the bed of the machine because you could definitely get a nice paint chip if that happened. Here we take a look at this kind of brown colored screw. Nice thick cylindrical head. Okay and then it's just going to come off just like that more about this in a minute but now we we see the light fixture with the rotating on and off knob and there's a rubber grommet up here through the body and the light lead or the wires are coming through here going into the light fixture okay and to uh, remove the bulb, we're going to push in and rotate it a little bit. It's got a bayonet style, it's called, two little pins. So I push it in and rotate it away from me, and it comes out. Okay, and this is a 15 watt. This one is clear. They make frosted bulbs, but that's pretty pretty standard bulb. I'm 
I haven't bought one in years, but it's probably less than five dollars, maybe three. I don't know. But uh, the reason I'm approaching this video is this way: is I'm going to install an LED bulb because uh, an incandescent bulb gets hot, and if in a 15 watt bulb, you know, six inches above your hands while you're sewing this can get uh, you, you know your work area here especially this hand can get pretty warm in here especially if you live in the desert in Arizona <laughs> so um, I buy these LED bulbs um, from a seller on eBay now there's many sellers of this type of bulb and they come in different amount of uh, emitters I guess those little rectangle shapes on there I think they're called emitters but uh, I buy them from a lady named Suzanne who has a a store on eBay uh, called Foxy Finds for you and I'll uh, see if I can't put a link at the end uh, no no I can't link out on the end of the video so in the description below the video I'll look at her store and make sure she's still selling these. But she had a very good price and her service is top of the line. And I have bought many bulbs from her. And it, so to install the, the bulb, you remember the other one I kind of rotated to the back and pulled out. So if this pin is turned a little towards the back, it'll slide in. But no worries. Um, you know, if you put it in there you can just gently push push it in and turn it and you'll see when the pins hit the slot they'll fall in once it's in that far you're you're on to a spring in the back here and you just push it a little bit more against the spring what is that a 32nd of an inch or something you push it a little bit more against that spring and and then you'll turn the bulb towards you and those pins will lock into the contact okay so to remove it push in turn it away pull it out to put it in turn it until the until the pins uh, you know f find the slot there it is push it in push a little bit more and turn it towards you to lock it in Okay, now, I, I, I'm not going to put the lampshade back on, but I'm just going to hold it up there so we can compare the light uh, to how, it, how the incandescent bulb worked. So I'm just going to put this up here, and I'll hold my hand up out of the way here, and off this light, I'm going to turn the... LED light on. Whee! So this this is a a white LED. I think they make them what they call yellow, which is supposed to be more like an incandescent color. I like this white because it's very clean and bright. Now you see we still have some like an arc here and now we've got a big shady spot up here on the end there is more light on the work area than the incandescent bulb but let me turn this off the nice thing about this is we can improve that and the way that we do it is to remove this focusing lens see how see how thick that is so when the light is going through here it's making that arc and then these parts they're casting these weird little shadows so if you do want to put a, an LED light I recommend that you remove this lens and I think that's why you see a lot of these lenses on eBay <laughs> uh, you know for five or ten bucks but there's one screw holding a retaining clip here see that see that little clip right there and then there's a groove in the lampshade and this edge of the shade fits right in that glue groove 
So if you want to put it back on, you, you slip that edge under the uh, clip. Oh, I, I think I got the wrong edge there. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You, you, you slip the edge under the clip and put it in the groove and push it up to the top here. And then you would tighten that uh, screw back down. So uh, usually when, when I take this off, if a customer wants the LED and they agree to this, I'll take this off and the screw in the clip and put it in a Ziploc bag and wrap the lens in tissue. So if they ever want to go back to use the lens. Okay, so that's about the lens. Now let me put this back on here. And again, I'm just going to hold it in place. But uh, let me turn off the light. And we'll turn the LED light on. And we'll see what a difference that makes okay so I have a much smaller shadow out there on the whoops on the end and I think that's where the nose comes down it casts this little shadow out here but look at this work area this whole thing is super uh, bright and clear with this white light right on your on your work area where your needles entering your fabric um, you know it, e it even lights up the riser and so forth okay so I wanted to show you that while we were working on the light Now, I've switched all of my wife's machine to these LED lights years ago. And like I said, they, they make uh, some with a different amount of emitters. And I, I think this one was 104 emitters or something. And some people actually find it too bright. And I found them with, at, at like So Classic with, I think, 64 emitters. And they weren't this bright. Now I think these, I think I got these for like eleven dollars each or two for twenty from the, the the lady I buy them from. And at the time she had one of the best prices, and I think it was like free shipping. So I, I bought two of them, I think, to start, and they were great. So I haven't even looked around after that. I just bought them from her. So there, there we go about uh, and they're and they're shipped very well uh, you know they're covered in a mini ziploc and stuck in a little cardboard box and then they're wrapped with an instructional sheet kind of explaining the same the same thing I just showed you up here how to uh, take them on and off and stuff so let me put this bulb someplace where I won't break it <laughs> Now, uh, since we've got the lampshade off, um, I'm going to show you how to, to take out one screw, and uh, it's, right, it's right down here at the bottom, and it uh, holds the light fixture. There's a steel clamp that goes around it, and it holds the light fixture like together, and then let you mount it to the body of the machine. You see, I think I need a little bit bigger tip here. Now, if you've seen some of my um, other videos about restoration, like say the, the 404 model, where I take all the lighting out of the machine, uh, all the, well, all the lighting and the whole wire harness and, and the terminals on the end where you plug in your cords and everything. I strip it all out of the machine to clean the machine. And then I tried a couple of models where I loosen it. There's the, there's the screw. 
where I, I loosen it like this and then I would put like a, a plastic, wrap plastic around this, like a little plastic bag or Ziploc and tape it on to keep this dry while I cleaned it. And then frankly, the last three or four machines, I've just left it hanging here. And, and I've washed the machine and just dried this very well and it did not suffer any damage. So I thought, wow, why do I cut the wires and pull them out of the machine if I can kind of clean them in place? So I'm going to show you how I prepare to do that. And then I'll show you how to cut the wires and take them all out if that's what you want to do. So this wire is going up through this little grommet I mentioned. And then when it comes up here to the top of the body, um, there is a clip what's well, called a wire clip right here and you can see the wires coming across and going down in this space or little square tunnel where it finally ends up down here next to the motor and to the plugs but we'll just follow the wire from from the light fixture up here this clamp is screwed in place okay and it uses one of the screws here in the front that holds this little cover plate this little indicator plate it's got a long screw here to go through and hold that clip and it's got a very short screw on this side just to hold the the indicator plate on so this screw we want to uh, loosen and you can remove it if you want let me change my tip again to that smaller tip but then when you uh, get that out you can remove the clip okay and, and I'll show you how that how that clip works because it uh, I just put this about in the middle here and then these are kind of those soft brown screws that we we found holding these other plates on and uh, so just just be careful with them if you want to come up here and put some penetrating oil or warm it up with a hair dryer if it fe feels too hard But um, just don't just don't damage the screw. You know, don't use a cheap uh, screwdriver on it. It's a little bit longer than you think, right? Because <laughs> it's holding that clip. And I'm going to go ahead and take it all the way out just to show it to you. It's got a little tapered end to get started into the clip. And it's kind of a bugle head, flat, kind of like a wood screw would be. Okay, put that aside for a moment. Let's see if I can show you this uh, clip up here. Now you can see the clip right here. Now part of this clip, um, it goes, it, it holds down the, end, the wire as it's going into the grommet. But the clip extends over here and has like a little, hmm, I don't know, finger that tucks into the frame over here whoop, at the end of the stitch width. To, to keep your lever and guide it into the straight stitch slot. You know, you, you, you probably know as you come over here, it'll boop, pop up into that little triangle there. Okay. So, to, to, to get this out, I usually move this over towards the left or even all the way left. 
because you've got to you you have to kind of uh, grab that clip and kind of tilt it and get it away from that stitch with lever and let's see maybe if I go all the way if I move that lever all the way left there we go so just move that lever all the way left okay move the stitch with I need a cameraman move the lever all the way uh, left take out the screw in the front and tilt the clip up like that and bring it out now we can show it to you so that's how it sits in behind the indicator plate okay and if we come at a top view you see this part right here is sitting on top of that wire as it's coming down through the grommet so it's got this little ledge and like a little shelf under there that sits on the wire now this end this is that little kind of like finger I was telling you about that sticks into a, into the slot in the machine right next to the straight stitch in so when it's behind there it's kind of sitting like this so it not only clips down the wire to go through the let me get a little closer here not only clips down the wire to, to go as it goes through the grommet but this little finger stabilizes it and helps uh, determine the end of the lever okay and it's it's steel so we have to we have to get that out to uh, work on the wiring better okay so we've got that out the next thing is um, hmm, it's called the oil shield Now the oil shield, where the wire comes up through that tunnel from down below, it sits on a little <clears throat> steel shelf and goes through a little uh, triangle shaped spacer to go over to the wire clip. And this is easy to take off. Uh, because there's a little bit of slack up here where the wires are spliced. So if you just pull this whole thing up, it just clips on. And I'll, I'll show you how. But see, then you've got the wire splice here. From the light lead coming from the bottom to the light lead actually going to the light fixture. So when you, when you pull that up, now you can twist this... Um, oil shield off and let me get it off of there mm. so if you ever have a damaged or burned out uh, light fixture good grief this usually isn't that bad there we go um, you may need to replace this light lead here and the lamp um, that may be a reason other than you know getting in here to clean or or to work on stuff that you would want to take this out so first let me sh let me show you how it clips here see on, on the back side it's just like a three three prong clip and it just clips on to one of the edges of that space I call it a tunnel but like a space so it just pushes right on with uh, two of the little prongs in the back and one in the, how can I do this better? Two of the prongs behind that edge and one in the front of it. And then the little shelf comes over and guides the wire down to go under the clip that we removed 
and then this wire can, can is tucked in that little triangle shape slot and the oil shield you see where oil and grease have been thrown up from the bottom so they call it the oil shield um, to me it's just as much of a guide to keep the wire in place so it doesn't get into the pattern selector or the or the disc and it doesn't get down here into the gear or shaft the oil shield okay uh, you saw me pull up this the wire lead going down through this space okay so when I've got a little slack there see I can pull this away and through the grommet or pull the grommet out a little bit so it's not right up against the machine so when I clean the machine everything behind the light fixture and the wire and all this area I, ca I can get clean in here because you know because the lights the lights not sitting there blocking it now some people don't take this off to clean they just kind of clean around it so if, if that's your thing go ahead but this is what I used to do and then I'd put like a snack size ziplock over it and tape the end a little bit and but I, I like I said I don't even do that I just wash it like that and and just dry it very well it's easier to spend two or three minutes more drying than to wrap it all up and tape it and all that stuff so now that I've got um, this wiring and everything loose up here I'm gonna go down oh no I'll come over here how about that I'll come over here because here there's two terminals here right this is this is actually called the three prong <laughs> I know it's weird isn't it it's called the three prong terminal even though there's two because on some of the older machines there was three and the cord still has three holes uh, because the cord can be used on the old the three pin even though there's no wire connected to the center okay oops goes like that so this is called the three pin and it has one screw holding it now I think like the 401 maybe has two screws you know but it just has the one screw here and I'm going to loosen that screw and take it out and uh, I'll show you that screw I show you the screws because they're all a little bit different and people get them mixed up and and email me hey I can't remember which which screw goes where I got these three screws and so I kind of that's why I try and show them in case you're trying to put it back together but so this now is is kind of loose it just sits in there in a, in a big hole in the body and uh, it's got a flange to sit in a recessed area and to remove it you would just pull it away now we're going to go and look at this uh, two prong this is called oh i need some light down here this is called the two prong terminal right so this is this is the plug right and this is the terminal because it's where the wires terminate okay and this is this one would be called the male half of the terminal and this would be called the female half of the plug now uh, down down here where where the um, foot controller plugs in okay see that this is the um, called the female half of the two prong terminal and and the cord from the foot controller has the two pins on it it's called the male half of the two prong terminal ok 
Okay. So you can either clean this in place. I have done. But I'm going to show you where, where this one pulled out. This one pushes in. Okay. See if I can set this little spotlight on something here and so I can get my hands free. And there's there's like a couple of screws that hold a bracket in place because these plugs can be different on the different machines. And uh, there's two little screws right next to the, the terminal. And those, that's what I want to remove so I can beep, push this terminal in. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my smaller tip and see if I can get these two little silver headed screws out of here. This one. Now you see over here I have the oil pan off and you'll see in a moment I, I have the motor um, retention bracket and the motor pulled out so I can do this wiring and if you if you didn't see that or don't know how to do it in the description below the video and at the end of the video I'll, I'll put a link to Regina the 403 a singer playlist and it'll have all the videos for taking all this stuff off and so forth so there's one of the screws let me get the other one off here <clears throat> now if the way I do this now I'm, I'm almost there I'm going to take this screw out let's see let me put these aside and then this um, should just kind of push in so you so you see here I've, I've got the motor out right Got the got the motor unplugged, the motor out, and then you're gonna see. Here's that. Oops, is that in in view? Here's that terminal, and it should pop in. Uh oh. What's the story, buddy? Hmm. I know on the others I've done is just there it is. Okay, just had the wiggle. It's just kind of stuck in there. So here's the terminal. Here's the back side of the terminal with the with the wiring for it. Okay. And then up here you're going to see the wiring going to that three uh, three pin terminal. Okay. So from that uh, three pin is a wire lead coming down to the two pin. And then there's also another wire, the light lead that that comes from the back of that what they call the three pin terminal and it loops under the motor tunnel and it goes up um, into the space to get it up to the top of the machine okay so to remove the wire, once you get this uh, clip, or, or once you get the two pin off, you can just pull out the, the uh, three pin. Now I'm going to grab that loop of wire, okay, and get it up there a little bit. And then I'll take you around to this side and show you pulling that two pin with the with the little 
wires that go to the motor and I pulled this out okay now right there whoops and then uh, you see here's that here's that wire uh, can you see it going across here here's that wire from the light lead coming from the top so right there I am at where I would leave it to clean the machine okay now the next part of the video I'm going to show you how to cut those connectors up top and pull the wiring completely out of the machine like I used to do if you ever have a need or a desire to do that so that's what we're going to do now. All right, so if you decide to remove all the wiring from the machine, uh, or even just to replace the light lead and, and the uh, light fixture for some, some reason, you'll need to cut the wires here where they're spliced to get together with these wire connectors. Um, the the tunnel or space that the wire comes through is uh, fairly small and uh, be pretty pretty hard to get these through let alone you have the whole light fixture on the end of the wire so that's the reason uh, for the cut and you you want to cut them as close to the wire connector as uh, as you can get so that you don't lose a lot of wire um, these are not the twist off kind these from the singer factory are the crimp they're they're slid in and they're crimped and i fooled around with them before trying to uncrimp them so to speak and i never had much luck so if you cut them close to the connector you will uh you'll you'll have enough slack to uh, re-splice them. You'll have enough wire to re-splice them and still reach the terminals and uh, so forth. So uh, I do leave one of the connectors on the wire going down to the terminal. Um, so this this one I'm just going to cut one wire on this on the uh, side towards the the lamp and then the other I'm going to cut both um, wires just kind of what they what they look like inside there okay and then uh, for the lamp now if, if you've already got it, uh, the screw out and everything, like, like I do, you can just pull that wire out through the hole and you have the whole, the whole thing removed here. Okay. And uh, sometimes the grommet is pretty hard and it's stuck in the machine. So my grommet was already pushed out of the machine. Uh, when I went to work on it so just the whole thing came out and uh, the the reason that I leave one of these on is because I want to tie a string to this I've, I've done this different ways but it's real easy to pull the wire out it's not as easy to pull it up through the little hole down here um, up at the top here, the, this opening is pretty big, but when it goes down in there on the bottom, it's like maybe a half inch square or a little over that. So it's kind of hard to, uh, it's kind of hard, you know, to, to get the wire up through there. So I'm going to tie a string. Uh, below that wire connector so that uh, it will pull a string down when I pull the wire out. That way I'll have a string 
through the machine when I want to pull the wire back up later. So that's that's the reason for this deal. <laughs> so let's see if I can turn this sideways. Uh, well, yeah, I think that's still maybe still going to be the best way to show you here. Because sometimes this will get hung up on that little opening down in here. So sometimes I've got to manip manipulate it back and forth. Okay, And you can go in from the end of the machine and pull the wire. Or since you've taken the three uh, pin male terminal out, you can pull it here. Okay, It just depends on what works best for you. So let's see if I can get it through that little uh, opening down there. It's a little tight. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So I, I was able to get it through there. So now I'm just going to, to pull it out. Okay. And then I'll uh, cut my string here. And I'll cut off the other uh, wire connector. And now I have my whole uh, wire harness with both terminals out of the machine. Okay, so you know you do get where these have been cracked, or or like the the pin or post broken off. Um, these can be damaged, so you may need may need to replace it. You may need to buy a whole used wire harness off of a place like eBay, and replace the one you have if you have damaged wires or or uh, something like that. And uh, towards the end of the video, I think I'll put up a wiring diagram as a picture slide in there. So you can kind of see uh, how Singer shows it to be wired. Okay. Now, normally, uh, let's get this out of the way. Don't lose my string. Normally, what I've been doing then... Uh, if I have it out, I usually leave it out until I wash the machine. Okay, so what I would do is just leave some slack on the string here and tie it in a knot and cut off the excess and just leave it in there while I wash the machine. It won't be in the way, it won't hurt anything. And then when I go to reinstall uh, the wiring, you know, I've got it in there. So let me show you how uh, I uh, attach the, the wire to this to get it back up through that little tunnel. So I, I just take a, a, I take my string, my end of the string, wrap it over from, be, from behind the wire, uh, cross it behind itself, the string, and pull, pull the end up like that. And I pull it snug and about an inch or so back from the end of the wire. And then uh, just going to come back here and wrap it with some tape. Pull that snug and just, just so I don't have the end of the wire uh, sticking out to get, oh, sorry. I've just been wrapping it here to get, I don't want the end of the wire sticking out to get caught. It's, it gets kind of hung up anyway. So, uh, and if you can just stick the wire up in there, push it through with a stick or however you want, however you want to do it, you know.
Okay, that's how we used to pull small cables and conduits. <laughs> so then I'm going to feed this up in there and uh, see if I can get it uh, up into that uh, hole and through it. <clears throat> does always seem to like to hang up, but there it goes. Okay. Then let me take this uh, tape and the string off and then uh, I'll show you how to uh, put the light lead back in there and and splice them together with new wire connectors so to put uh, our new wire nuts on here we're going to have to strip off the insulation and we strip off uh, about less than a half inch so three eighths or less than a half inch is about right and I, I stripped off the others let me show you this one here um, in case you've never done it a stripping tool is very nice because it's uh, easier to get a clean cut of the insulation and if you strip off a little bit too much you can always trim trim the wires like you see those are a little uneven so I could trim the longer one a little bit because uh, you, you do want whatever length you end up you want them to be pretty even okay put, put that in here so it doesn't fall out um, then you can just put the wire and the grommet right up through the little hole in there. That's all you're going to do. Put them up through there, feed them up through there. Right? And uh, get them positioned because the wire's a little stiff in here. <laughs> so you want to get it turned a little bit to line up your screw hole right and then you can push your grommet up in there and you can attach the light fixture with your screw but first let me show you uh, this wire wire connector here Now, it was pointed out to me on another video that these are also called wire nuts. And uh, that's, that's a fact. So if you want to call them wire nuts, that's fine. Uh, I used wire connector. So if somebody goes to the store or searches Amazon or something, uh, they're looking for what's what it's going to say on the package now the interesting thing with with these wires and most electrical wires like this is one of the two leads will have an identifier it'll either have some uh, colored marking or in this case it has some raised ridges on one so this wire is smooth all the way around the wire and this wire next right next to the seam where the two wires are put together has three or four little raised ridges that you can see and you can feel and that's to identify when you when you go to splice the wires or terminate them Like in this case, I'm going to put the smooth one to the other smooth one. Okay. And you, you can twist these. Some people twist the wires together. You don't really need to, to do that. You do want to 
twist the individual strands like this so that they don't get hung up because when they when they go up in there there's usually a little metal uh, nut like in there and so you just want to get the ends together and slip them up in there and start twisting them like that and and the little nut's going to grab them and it'll do the twisting together okay then you just do the one with the raised ridges to the raised ridges and that's that's your simple wire splice right there so let's set up here and I'll just do a quick uh, quickly show you how to put everything back together I should have uh, mentioned to you that it's easier to put the if your grommet is out or you're replacing it it's it's easier to take the grommet in or out after you've pulled the wire out of it with with the wire in it it can't flex as much and get up in the in the little uh, position I have to tell you that about half the time I see the grommet not in the exact position just like when I opened this one it was kind of tucked up there but it wasn't in the spot so if you if you do want to get the grommet up in there try pulling the wire out of it first and then feeding the wire back through but then you you know if you saw me take this off earlier it's just the one screw uh, right there so when you when you are ready when you're done with your grommet or wiring or whatever uh, just hold the, the steel bracket up there against the machine and and it's just that one screw that that fastens uh, the light fixture back onto the machine there we go tighten it up with a I'm not going to tighten it real tight because I'm taking it apart but you want to snug it up firmly right firmly now how's the best way to show you about these clips and the oil guard I think I'll uh, raise up my camera <clears throat> for that part okay now to, to get this top part done up here we're uh, we need to put on the oil guard and dress the wire you know through it and we need to put on the wire clip to to secure it and keep it out of the way of the uh, stitch width lever here so uh, I'd start with the oil guard on this side of your splice towards towards the light um, you can slip the wire into this little triangular space and rotate it so it's laying flat like in a little tray there and then if you remember you've got this three uh, kind of a three prong clip that just clips right onto the edge of that opening where you brought up the wire the center center clip in front and the and the outside clips on the back of that edge just like that and it can it can move a tiny bit left and right to help you line up but mostly what that does is guide the wire through here above the gear above the fork feet connection off to the side of your pattern selector and cams and then runs it right down here for the clip so you should it should be flat if you need to push a little through it should be flat when it gets down here just get a little bit more and make it nice and flat there because now we've got to put this clip in and the clip if you remember that uh, screw hole okay and it's got this little arm or tail that ends up over, over here to the side so take take your uh, stitch width out of straight a little bit to make room for it and then tuck this arm 
under that lever to get it around the lever. There we go. And then once you're around the lever, you can go ahead and, and move this left. That, that little arm is right next to it in the body. And that should line up the, the uh, screw hole for the screw. See, we got a little... Got something to stick through there. Gonna stick it through here and there. So I had to I had to push that clip down a little bit to make the hole line up. So now you're on top of this wire that you brought that you brought through the oil guard and down on that little edge. So you're 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 clipping the wire there. And then you've got your one longer uh, little brown screw that you put in there to hold that. There it goes. And then, of course, you, you'll snug that up firmly. And I'll remind you, these brown screws, these little ones like that, that, that hold these indicator plates and stuff, they seem to be kind of a softer metal. So, uh, be careful with those. I, I know I repeat myself, but I've, I still get emails about that almost every month. That, hey, where can I find these screws? I chewed them all up, taking them off. And... Uh, you just have to try and find use one. I've taken them before to the hardware store and they say no, the threading is a different size. They're not standard uh, or European sizes. They're kind of in between. So once, you, once you've got this accomplished now, and once you've got uh, everything dressed out and, and in position that you like, I'm going to move this clip just a little to the left here to, to get a little better clearance for my oil port that's down there. Then uh, you can pull, pull down on your wire harness a little bit here uh, and get, get these uh, wires tucked into this space. Okay? so that they're out of the way. So that's completely installed and, and what, you, what you call dressed. So now we, we'll go ahead and put the terminals back in. I'll show you that. To finish uh, dressing and installing the wire harness, we're just going to stick the two pin uh, female terminal back through the hole of the three pin okay and get that up in there I'm not going to screw it in place because I gotta play around with the wires down here and I, I got I want to get them in the right uh, position and another dark space for you to look into huh? uh, <laughs> line it up with the with the hole there make sure both my wires will reach the motor yes okay so um, that's that's pretty easy to, to figure out and accomplish, right? As a matter of fact, let's put the, let's put the screws on there to to hold it there, so that uh, it won't be falling back in and getting in our way, right? Let's see, where's my little screws here? Because the problem, the problem is there is the wire that's going up to the top. When it comes down, it has to be taken around the, the bottom edge of that tunnel. And then it needs to be put, kind of tucked up behind the three prong 
terminal so that it's uh, out of the way and that's usually where where we get in trouble is you know like we take it over the top of the tunnel or we don't tuck it up behind the the three prong terminal and it looks it looks good until we like trying to slide the motor and stuff in there and then we that's when we have our uh, our problem oops what happened here Did I get this too tight Mm -hmm. hmm. Excuse me a second. I I, I know I had a, a I had trouble taking that out there. I guess I didn't have it pushed in a hundred percent. I remember having trouble kind of taking it out too. I see it sticks out farther than the head of the screw. So that's how I can tell that I've got it in the right place. Now let's look in there and see what we can see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Now can we see this wire right here it's coming down from the top through the little hole in there and it's coming around here and this is the loop going up to the terminal that has to be down below this tunnel area and then kind of looped up behind that three prong uh, terminal because if it's if it's out here or it's put up here on the top like like this it's not a good way to go it's got to be down below that tunnel and and it kind of curls back behind this three prong So I'm going to get the three prong ready to push in, so you can see how I'm how I'm pushing it in back there, right? Okay. So I just want to get this wire tucked down under where that three prong is going to slide through. When you're doing this yourself, it's not going to be as hard as as it appears here. You won't be working around the camera, and you're going to have a better a better look at it. There we go. See, while I while I've got that pretty good, let's go over here, and we'll get our uh, three prong terminal. You want it to be flush all the way around, pushed in. If that cord is in the way, you know it's not pushed back to the back of the machine far enough. Because this this should fit. There's a you know there's a recessed place for it here to fit, and that's where it should be. And don't tighten the screw until it's flat, because this is the you know kind of the bakelite. Uh, plastic and it and it will crack on you if you try and and use screwing it in and pushing it with this with the screw to get the wire back there it won't be sitting evenly and you'll crack the plastic And I know, I know, I mention these kind of things because those are the kind of emails that I get. Oh, you know, I, I broke that. Where can I get a new one? I, who sells new ones? <laughs> it's like, no, you're going to have to find a, a used one. So let's see if we can 
look in here a little bit. And you see there. Now I've really got it tucked. Now that I have this uh, three prong most of the way installed, it's helping me hold that wire. And I can tuck it all the way to the back. Way back there behind the behind the uh, three prong. See that? So now there's nothing blocking my three prong so I can tighten it all the way. And then the wire's coming right down here. And it's a curving in front of the uh, in front of and below the, the motor tunnel and then it's just going to go right up the side. So all my wiring is protected and out of the way and that also allows me to get this totally flattened now all the way around and then I'll tighten up the screw. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Get this lamp off and hold it here now. Maybe get one more one more look in there. Okay. So we'll set this back up because we're going to put the lampshade on. And then this is where, you know, this is where you decide if you want to put um, your incandescent bulb um, back in there or if you or if you want to use a new uh, a new LED type. But either way, uh, usually you're going to start with the pin up and a little back. But it doesn't matter. You could put the pin in facing you. It's not going to go in until it's lined up. There. And then you push it a tiny bit against the spring and turn it towards you. And it locks in. And you can't pull it out without pushing it back in and turning it to the back and pulling it out. Okay, there we go. So, to put our um, lampshade back on here, let me grab it. Now, if you, if you remember, I took out this uh, focus, focusing lens that, they, that Singer put in there. Now, even before I had switched my wife to LED, she wanted it out just because she felt it made funny shadows on there and she didn't she didn't like it but if you like it you want to keep your machine original uh, it just slips under the edge of that clip right and pushes into the groove slides uh, up towards the end here and then you want to tighten that uh, clip retaining screw and that's all that holds it in there. Okay. So it's it's up to you whether you put that in there or not and what time of bulb type of bulb you use. Once you get that all decided and accomplished, then it just uh, sits right in. It's a little special place here. This particular one has a long narrow screw just one to hold the lampshade on so I'll get that up there I turn it so I can get my normal angle on there now this one uh, y you do want to be pretty firm it's all metal you got a metal screw and a metal housing and a metal body and you don't want this to uh, vibrate around <laughs> yeah it's real annoying right 
that's it. That's about um, the light and the wiring and the wiring harness and the two terminals on the Singer uh, 403A and a lot of other machines. Some machines uh, have a dual cord up here and you will not have this. That's even a little simpler to work on. Of course, you would uh, slip your slip your motor up there into the tunnel and it's going to go right in because you've wired everything properly and then you're going to plug your little leads back on those motor pins and you're set. Thanks for watching this one and uh, I hope you will come back and see another uh, video for Regina the 403A or any of the other 460 some videos I have there. You guys take care.